Did you know that purchasing a condominium with financing is very different than purchasing a single family home? So much so you have to be super careful not to waste time and ultimately put a big deposit at risk. I am going to talk about what you need to know now. Hey everyone, my name is Jamie Pretzi. I'm a real estate agent in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. And today I'm going to talk to you about what you need to know about buying a condo with financing. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button because we always put out new videos every single week and also use the link in our information box and download our free guide today. If you would like to call me or schedule a chat with me, I have a Calendarly link below. I also have my telephone number for calls and texts or email. However, you want to reach out to us. A lot of the contact information is below. So let me know. Okay, let's get started. So condo financing is really important. And I haven't spoken about this in a very long time because most of our buyers who have been purchasing with condominiums in the area have lately been purchasing with cash. And I was just looking for the MLS data of closed sales for condominiums on just for instance, Miami Beach, over the last 180 days, and 55% of the properties that were purchased were bought with cash. So we are still a very heavy cash market, but it's not impossible to buy with financing. You just need to know what to expect because you do have to do a bit of prepping in advance and really set some proper expectations. So the most important thing to know is you have to be very careful when buying a condominium with financing in our area mainly because you can really waste a lot of time looking at the wrong type of properties and end up being super disappointed or in the worst case scenario you can lose a big deposit because if you're working with a lender who is not experienced in this situation of buying with financing for condominiums in our area they just can sometimes send out an approval letter before the condominium building is actually approved and it can be an issue and i will say Fortunately, I've not had that happen with a buyer on our side, but I've been on the other side as the seller's agent and I've seen it happen. So you have to be very, very careful. I mean, we put down pretty big deposits here. It's usually around five to 10% of the purchase price. That's a sort of customary amount. So it can be a lot of money. So what's different when it comes to purchasing a condominium than a single family home is this. When you are purchasing in a condominium, the lender will qualify you as the borrower and then they will also qualify the building. Okay, so this is how the lender sort of looks at qualifying you. They first consider, are you purchasing the property as a primary residence, a second home or an investment property? So that's sort of the first layer. How do you intend to purchase the property? When you're buying as a primary residence, it is assumed that you're going to be living in the property. There will be a document that you'll be signing at closing saying, yes, I intend to use this property as my primary residence. And then you have second home and third is the investment property purchase. Now, when a bank is qualifying you as a borrower and then also the building, they want to know how you are intending to purchase this property because there are different qualifications and different down payments and different loan products for primary second home and investment properties. These are discussions that you need to have with a lender who is very experienced in our area. But I just want to point out that there are different layers depending on how you intend to purchase the property. Now, the next layer of the process is getting your pre-approval letter. So it's very important here to get a pre-approval letter, mainly in this market right now, because a lot of the properties are tenant occupied and a lot of seller agents are asking for proof of funds or pre-approval letters prior to accessing the properties for showings. So I would definitely be prepared for that request prior to looking at properties here. And just always keep in mind that this is really just an initial process for you. They're probably going to ask you a series of questions. They may ask for some extra documents, but typically it's not super deep. It's, you know, kind of a, um, just a general overview of your financial situation and your credit and just, you know, see what your debts are and just to determine if you are approved for X amount of money. Now, once the offer gets accepted, 
that's where things get serious. You will actually take your contract and submit a formal loan application to your lender. At that point, they will take that application and it gets submitted. I always do like this because I'm talking about going to underwriting, like, I mean, like another department. <laughs> so it will be submitted to the underwriting department of that bank. And that's a completely separate department than your contact person that you're dealing with. These are the people who are actually underwriting the loan. They are going to be asking for a lot more documents. And that is where number three comes in, the buyer. Now, if they didn't do a super detailed, uh, deep request for documents in the initial process, this is where they're going to ask you for everything. And they may, may ask you a few times. They'll be asking you for uh, tax statements. They'll ask you for your um, bank statements and other documents, whatever they need to process this loan. And there will be a lot of requests for documents. They're going to be asking you for all of this documentation at this time. Now, when you're buying a condominium, they're going to be doing a very similar thing that they'll be doing with you with the building. The bank's underwriting team will send a document to the building's property management team, and this document will need to be resubmitted to the underwriting department. It's also known as the condo questionnaire. Now, a lot of times I talk to people about a condo questionnaire and they're like, okay, a condo questionnaire. So what is that? So this is what it looks like. Now, this is just a generic one that I had from many years ago. Uh, every bank has different condo questionnaires. This will not probably be the one that your bank uses. It's very, very general. And it's really just the first 16 questions. There's typically three or four pages. Sometimes there are fewer pages, but it can be pretty detailed. Now, this one is just talking about the project characteristics and the amenities of the building and just the general project information. But once you get deeper into the questionnaires, it starts asking about the financials of the building and the budget and reserves and how many tenants versus owners. And oh, there's a lot of questions throughout it. So basically it's several pages long. And the thing that you need to know about this is it's not a fixed situation. So when I start talking to people about this, they'll say, okay, Jamie, so which buildings are approved? Now, some buildings are already approved. There's not a lot, but there are several buildings that are already approved. And that changes because they are approved at certain points and that approval lasts for a while and then it expires. So this is a very fluid situation. It can be kind of a month to month situation or a year to year situation. And it really just depends on a lot what's going on in that building. So for instance, I'll tell you what happens. In a smaller building, let's say there's 10 units and maybe someone purchases one to two more units than their original unit. Well, now you have one owner who owns more than 10% of the building. That can create an issue for lending. Or maybe one month the building's completely fine, but the next month the contractor's suing the building for non-payment of some project they did that can create an issue. So there are things that come up all the time that can really create issues with financing. It's very hard to know for sure 100% if everything's going to be okay until that process happens with the underwriting team. And that's why you need to make sure you work with a lender who does this immediately. This cannot wait until after they've sent out your final approval letter because some banks do that. And this cannot be at the very end. It needs, it needs to really happen immediately. Next, what happens if something is wrong on this document? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't matter how well qualified you are. It could be a non-negotiable with the bank and they will not approve the loan. Sometimes if there's litigation going on in the building, but there's already an attorney letter written to provide documentation that that litigation is resolved or will be resolved. So that's something internally that happens between lawyer letters and also the underwriting department. They make the call on that. That can be resolved. Um, but this is just when you have to be very, very careful as a buyer and make sure that the banks have, are not issuing an approval letter before the underwriting team has done this due diligence because it can create big issues for you and you can lose your deposit. And this is where I get really scared um, for our buyers. And um, this is why when we're talking at the beginning, I say, hey, are you buying with cash or financing? Because I really need to know because I have to make sure that we spend time showing you 
condos in buildings that have a high chance of getting approved. Now, again, it's not written in stone. It's not 100% sure, but we like to try and do our best. So next, let's talk about how to mitigate issues with financing condominiums, because obviously there's solutions to everything because, you know, we do it every day. So number one, you really have to work with professionals who know what they're doing. I come across a lot of people in my business that will, I say yes, you to death. And they'll gloss over everything and make it look great. But in reality, it's not great because, you know, they can be, you know, showing you properties and buildings that might not be eligible. So you're wasting time. One time when I was the seller's agent on the other side of the transaction, I was a little bit surprised that the buyer was qualified to purchase with this loan in the building. We had already disclosed all of the known issues of the building, but the lender and the realtor assured us that it was okay. And it wasn't. The buyer had a big issue at the end. I was the seller's agent on that transaction, but it was not a good situation for the buyer. So you have to be very, very careful who you're working with. And if you're working with a lender who really acknowledges this and doesn't yes you to death and just promise the rule at the beginning, that's probably a good sign that you're working with a lender who's experienced in condo financing. And if you need to purchase a place that is not tenant occupied, really focus on properties that are not tenant occupied. We had um, some clients last year that were, they were buying a primary residence and all of the units that they were interested in happened to have tenants and those tenants had year long leases. And in our area, unless there's a kickout clause in the lease, uh, the tenant has the right to stay for the duration of the lease. You don't waste time looking at properties that if they have tenants for another year and you're like, oh, well, we'll just see if the tenant will leave. They're probably not going to leave. So anyways, that's another story, but um, you know, that's what you need to know about that. Okay, next, check with the building and see if there's been financing in the building recently. So that's a good sign. If you call the property management company and they'll disclose that with you, um, that's a really good sign. We can always ask the seller's agents, some seller's agents who are really diligent with their process of listing a property they know. And just remember, there's really no way to guarantee this process 100% until you go under contract and the bank does their due diligence because every buyer and their lender and that underwriting process is really unique to that buyer at that time, that building at that time and their process at that moment. And last but not least, just remember, it is what it is. If you prep in advance, you have a much better chance of being successful in this process. Also, you will need a pre-approval letter if you're getting financing in order to make an offer on a property because sellers and their agents will ask for this as part of the offer process. And as your agent, the buyer's agent, I need that document in order to prepare the financing contingency on the sales contract to you know, protect you with the financing contingency. And just be sure to prep all of this in advance. There's nothing worse than coming here and looking at properties and then not being prepared. And a lot of sellers and their agents are requiring the pre-approval pre or proof of funds in order to even show the properties today. So just better to do your due diligence and know exactly how you intend to purchase that property. My name is Jamie Pretzi. This is my husband, Ogden Pretzi. We work as a real estate team here in South Florida. You can find us online on Instagram at The Pretzies. Our website is thepretzies.com and all of our contact information is here. I'm also on WhatsApp if you'd like to reach out to me there. Okay, that's it. Have a great day and we will see you soon.